Well, we're going into revival. And I, I, I got to tell you something. Um, I, I would guess if I asked each and every one of you what revival means, you'd all kind of have a different idea of what it is. Yeah. Maybe you wouldn't be wrong. Maybe we'd all be right. But revival is kind of like, you know, I was thinking this. How do, you, how do you describe this? You know, uh, you remember when you get a, a new car, man, or young people or children. If you remember, you get a new toy. You know, at first, it's like the greatest thing in the world. This is awesome. And then after a while, it's just kind of like, you know, I, I, I used to see that with my kids at Christmas time. Christmas Day, they play with those things. A week later, they're just sitting there in a corner, and I'm like, I don't know, all that money. Now, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, but sometimes our relationship with Jesus Christ gets kind of like that. <coughs> it's just kind of like, oh, I'm a Christian. kind of like you know this is why we did communion you know stop for a moment and think about your salvation how important it is now the scripture I've chosen is 2nd Timothy 1 6 for this reason I remind you to fan into flames that gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. I'm going to stop right there. You can read the rest if you want. Fan into flames. I want to remind you, and Paul's talking to Timothy here. Timothy, I want to remind you, something special happened. I laid my hands on you, and boy, God gave you a gift. Don't let it go sit in that corner. Don't, don't, you know, don't put it on the back burner. You know, a picture of fire. That's what I see when I see this. Picture of fire, you know, it's, it's, it's almost out. But you take a fan and you start waving it, and those flames start coming up. Right? He says, fan into flames that gift. Now, I want to make several statements, and I want to tell you, this, this service is going to be a little bit different. Now, I'm going to want you to do a few things for me. Make sure you, you those of that, that know me, you know I like to do this. I like to make sure that you're not sitting there sleeping with your eyes open. <laughs> kind of pat yourself. Say, he's talking to me. Oh, I didn't hear anybody say, he's talking to me. All right, now look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. Okay. You start wondering who I'm talking to, those, those are your two choices. I'm talking to you or I'm talking to somebody sitting next to you. All right. This is revival. Many times, and I've seen it, people come to revival meetings, you're going to hear a special speaker, and, and Devin's good. Devin's good. You know, you're, going to, you're going to get the correct. But listen, and I believe, you know, there's been some prayers going on up for this. God's Spirit's going to be here, and I believe everybody that comes is going to go away a little bit changed. A little bit changed. You fan into flames, though. Have you ever noticed going through God's word that many, many, many times we start the process? Let me give you a few examples. Remember the scripture in Chronicles? If my people would humble themselves and pray, who's God waiting on? 
He's talking to me. If my people. What about the one that everybody loves, loves to say? Give and it will be given unto you. Notice it doesn't say, God gave to me so I can. He says, give and it will be given unto you. The ball is in our court. We make the moves. We move, and God, who I, I, can, I can testify about this. Can anybody tell me that God did something incredible for you? Yeah. Yeah. I can testify. God, by his very nature, doesn't just give you what you're asking for. He does exceedingly abundantly above what we'll what we're even able to think to ask. We can't even think of it. You know, now I'm praying, I'm thinking, you know, Lord, I got some pretty, whew, I got some pretty big ideas. I, I, I can think of it, and then that scripture comes to mind. <laughs> you haven't scratched the surface compared to what God's got planned. Um, in your bulletins, there, bottom of the bulletins, there's several scriptures there. I encourage you to read them. Luke 14, 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, okay, I'm going to do it again. Who's the Lord talking to? The Lord said unto the servant, go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house that my house may be filled I'm just going to ask you know I, I hope you're all planning and coming for the revival meetings I know we got work schedules and we got things to do but I, I you know I hope you come and I hope you bring somebody with you Now, you read this whole story, and it actually has got a sad ending to it. Did you know that? It's because the people that were originally invited, the Lord says they will not taste of the food that I prepared. That's kind of scary. That's a whole other sermon. But what I wanted to point out here, though, it says, go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them. I looked that word up. Looked it up in the Greek. Ken and I were talking about this. It, 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 actually, it actually almost means <coughs> force them. It falls a little bit short of that. By all means, convince them. If you're a salesman, you put on your best performance. By all means, just falling short of grabbing them and dragging them on in there, you compel them to come in. Nobody raise your hands for this one. How many have compelled somebody this week? Oops. I want to I want to tell you. I went most of you know I went to Nicaragua. And and I, I'm going to talk a little bit about Nicaragua because I, I got to tell you. We're hearing things on the news. And I'll show you some pictures. We're not live streaming today. I'm going to tell you why I'm not live streaming today. One, I'm going to show you some pictures that well, I don't want to offend anybody down there. I'm going to show you some pictures that I want the government to let me back, so I don't want them getting out there. We're blessed. We are so blessed. So we're going to be a little bit careful here, but I want you to know they're having revival. Now, look around this church. 
We've been supporting a missionary down there. But more than that, we have been praying. We have been praying. And I want you to know, and I say it often, your prayers have power. Your prayers have power. What is going on down there and what I'm about to show you, you know, whether you've given, whether you've whispered a prayer, you have part of this ministry. And we're also praying for Cumberland. Right. We're also praying for... So if those prayers that we've been praying have power to do what is going on down there, watch out Cumberland. Watch out loved ones that need to know Jesus. Because prayers have power. Many times God is, you know, we're saying, well, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying, and nothing, 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 nothing. No, that you, this physical body is not experiencing anything right now, but God is behind the scenes, and he's working. He's doing an incredible work. Again, he's setting it up so that when the answer comes, it will be far greater than what you could imagine. I could not imagine a year ago when I went to Nicaragua, one year ago, it's almost one year to the day almost, that the country would change. And I'm not talking about a church. I'm not talking about a family. I'm not even talking about a city. I'm talking about the country would change so much. A year ago, it was considered the safest country in Central America. Today, it's considered the most dangerous. One year. One year. Revival. Listen, there should be a, a sound bite on that. You might have to click on that. Uh, the government allowed you to come to preach in Nicaragua. There, there really was a miracle because they don't let anybody right now to come to the country because of the situation. But it's a blessing. It's a blessing because they know that Ronald Lee Estivala is coming to Nicaragua. God bless you, my friend. Check your email, and I will send you some others later on. Now, you heard him say there, it's a miracle. I, I, I got to lay this out for you, you know. <laughs> Have you ever been like that, where, you know, somebody's telling you, man, I, I need an answer from God, I need an answer from God, and you're praying for him, and you're saying, God's going to come through, God's going to come through, and then you turn around, and you go, oh, God, <laughs> you've got to answer this prayer. So I, I knew I was going to go down there for this school, and I keep calling Salvador up and saying, have they approved my visa, can I get, they're not letting any, I, you know, I'm, I'm calling around, they're not letting any Americans in. No Americans in. They think we're all CIA agents. <laughs> they do. <laughs> you know, that's kind of like, they're really suspicious of us because of what went on in the 80s. And uh, so they're not letting any, I don't want to buy the ticket if I can't go. So I, I, every time I call Salvador, he says, oh, you, no, it's okay. God wants you here. This is a God thing. You buy that ticket and send me the times. I, well, are you sure? Yeah, I'm a little cautious. I guess I don't know. Maybe my faith was, I don't know. I'm like, when were we going to find out? Oh, it, it, it'll be fine. You buy that ticket. You buy the t Finally, Tuesday, just, you know, like four days before I'm supposed to leave. I said, I buy the ticket. <laughs> and then I get this message. The little green thing there has basically got my name on it saying that I've been approved. And the sound bite, I don't know if you picked that up. He says, it is a real miracle. <laughs> this, this is a miracle. They let, you, they let three Americans in, two of them from Cumberland, Maryland. Me? And Pastor Doug Seaman, he's going next month in November to Nicaragua. 
two Americans in the whole country. Hey, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. God's doing something. Now, I talked to you a little bit about how God sets the stages. It was 18 years ago that Donna and I decided that, well, there was this missionary from El Salvador. He was itinerary rating, and we'd offer him you know, lunch in the afternoon, you know, do something nice, you know, help him. So we, we offered him 18 years ago. I met Salvador. No talk about going in the mission field or anything, just ask about his mission work. 17 years later, God tells him to call me up. Haven't talked to him since. A 17-year absent. But God was setting the stage. That's a miracle. That's amazing. It gets even more amazing when I, I went down there and I spoke at the, you know, the, the celebration of the Bible. First time they ever had anybody from outside the country as a guest speaker. Yeah, that's, that's God things. It's amazing. It's miracles. I was telling Paul, I said, you know, the thing about miracles is, you know, everybody's excited. They want to hear the story about a miracle. How many want to hear stories about miracles? Awesome. The first half of that story is you're desperate. You got to get to that point where you need the miracle. And that's a very uncomfortable place. A very uncomfortable place. And I can say it again, it was really uncomfortable. Because it was one miracle after another miracle that we saw. Again, friends, I want you to know something here. I, I, I want to tie this into these meetings, what we're doing here. Your prayers. Your prayers. God has been using. It's been setting the stage. Oh, they're praying again. Oh, I'm going to do a work. Oh, I got another prayer, man. I'm, I'm going to do, oh, I'm going to do a work. God chooses to use people. He chooses to use people. When I got to the airport, I was one of the first ones into the customs. I was the very last one out. <laughs> That's Salvador and Harlan, his wife. He said, I kept seeing people come out. I kept seeing people come out. I said, well, we got to pray. <laughs> they got Pastor Stavala someplace. Got him locked up in a room or something. They kept trying to figure out why I flew out of Washington, D.C. instead of Pittsburgh. <laughs> now, Miracles, friends, miracles. This fella here, when I got there, I said, let's go. I want to see where the school is going to be. I want, I want to see the grounds. You see, a year ago, it was, I thought, off-the-cuff remark. I said, what's happening to the churches? I see a building over here, and I see a building over here, and, and, and they, they were churches. They had been planted at one time, and now there's just one or two people here and one or two people here, and if something doesn't happen, they're going to be closing doors. And Salvador said, well, what's happening? He says, is, is we need pastors. We need preachers. We need pastors. I said, well, the Assemblies of God has got a university here. They train pastors. I says, what, what's happening? He says, well, he says, they, these, these new pastors, these new ministers, what they do is we send them up to the United States to be trained, and they don't come back. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures, and, you know, don't be so hard on them. 
This is some rough living. I dare to say some of the some of the the, the people that we have thinking that they are, they have it the worst have it better than the average down there. So he takes me to this piece of pride. Anyway, I said, off the cuff, I said, I think what we need to do then is we need to have a school where we train pastors here. That was about it. Got on the airplane, flew back here. <laughs> There's a school now that trains pastors. Somebody donated this land I'm about to show you. Donated this building, and I'll tell you a little bit about this building. But I want to tell you about this guy. So we're there. He drives me there. And remember, timing-wise, I'm the very last one out. There's a meeting that's going to be there. In fact, I missed one of the meetings I was supposed to speak, speak at because they, customs kept me so long. So they were, we were going to have a meeting there at, I think it was uh, 5 o'clock at night. This is about 10 o'clock. We get there, and we're looking around, looking at this building, and, you know, I'm going, oh, my. They're going, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Men, we're going to go up there in, in March. I hope I can take some of you with me. We're going to do some building. We're going to put some walls up, what they call walls. They're not like our walls. Um, we're going we're, we're gonna to do some. So he takes me there, and like I say, I'm, I'm looking around, and I'll show you a picture of it. I want you to see this guy. Look at him right now. We walk down this little alleyway, and that's the church. That, that's the building that's been donated to this church. Notice there's no walls there. In a second, I'm going to show you a picture of the back wall, which isn't there at all. There, in fact, the back part of the church is not there. Not at all. But in that little doorway there sat this fella and two ladies. Somehow he had heard that there was a minister coming from America that had some sort of healing ministry. I'm going to make it really clear right now. It's Jesus Christ. Always goes to Jesus. Has nothing to do with me other than I said I'm available. And that's all you got to do is say you're available. This man heard this, though. And see, he's on that other side of the miracle. He's got bone cancer in his back. The doctors say, you're done. Nothing we can do for you. He's all bent over like this. And he can walk like this. Salvador and I walk by there and he stops and he looks in there and he says, excuse me, who are you? And there were two ladies there that lived in the neighborhood. And they saw this poor man get off a bus. He caught two buses early morning to make his way to there. Didn't know if I was going to be there or not. He'd asked around and found out that that's where I was going to be sometime. But he made his way there. Got there about the same time we did. We just started off on the other side of the building. Barely able to walk. These ladies saw him get off the bus. They felt sorry for him, had compassion on him, and it went out and helped him. He says, is this where that preacher is going to be preaching about healing? And they said, yes. And they helped him on over, and they put him in that room. You can see he's covered with sweat. I mean, he was, he was hurting. <laughs> God is so good. We went in there, and he's telling us his story, and he's all bent over. Even the chair, he's all bent over. He says, uh, I'm out of options. God's got to heal me. He says, all right, we'll pray for you, but wait a minute. Do you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? He says, no. I just know I, I need a miracle. 
I said, well, we're going to right now show you how to receive the greatest miracle in the world. So we gave him the simple gospel, the good news. Jesus Christ is your Savior. Whatever happens in this life, you can have eternal life. We explained to him the gospel, and he gave his heart to Jesus. He gave his heart to Jesus. And I asked him, I said, will you serve him even if he doesn't heal you? With tears running down his eyes, he said, oh, yes. Oh, yes, you can feel the presence of God there in that little old room there. I says, all right, now I'm going to pray for you. And one of these little ladies somehow handed me a bottle of oil. I have no idea where she got it from. Because there's nothing there. Wait till I show you. She hands me this bottom, bottle of oil. I anointed him with oil. And all of a sudden, he started shaking. And my hand got hot. And he jumps up, puts his hands up, standing up just like he is there where he could barely walk. He walked around. He walked outside. There's curves and stuff there. God instantly healed him. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, that's, that's your Jesus. That's your Jesus. He did this, and he walked around. He, most of you know I got bad knees. He was walking better than me. And he goes, you know what? I'm a carpenter. Or I used to be a carpenter. He says, I think I want to work on this school. <laughs> Praise God, huh? Yeah, get excited about it. Come on, that's a lot better than somebody throwing a football. That's God. You can get excited about that. One miracle after another. We wanted to give the Bible students. By the way, we were, we were hoping for 20 Bible, stu or Bible students. We got 55. We got no building. We got no land. We got no money. We don't even have Bibles. But we got 55 students. We got no professor to teach them. Woo-hoo. How's that for planning? <laughs> Salvador keeps calling me up. I got another student. What are we going to do with them? <laughs> so I said, I, you know, going for the consecration, I want to get Bibles for these students. I want them to have a, a, a sword, right? I want them to have just a paperback. I want them to have something that I can write something in there, an inscription in it, give it to them, and 20 years from now they're going to have it. My dad... Give me this Bible. He wrote in it. And what he wrote prepared me. So I made arrangements up here to get Bibles. Now, I, got, I come up with a deal, $8.97 for a leather Bible. Sixty. I mean, that's a pretty good price. But I got to ship them down there or I got to take them through customs. And I can tell you right now, it would have been an incredible miracle getting those things through customs. And I don't want to take too long on this, but we, Salvador calls me up. I lost my clicker someplace. Here it is. Salvador calls me up and says, man, he said, I can get Bibles down here for the same price they're already here. You don't have to worry about going through customs. You don't have to worry about shipping them. They're already here. Get them when you get down here. Praise God. I thought it was a miracle. Let me see if I got the next picture. Oh. Now, I'm going to go back to the Bible. I told you this is going to be a little bit different. Go back to the, there's a, That's a house, folks. Somebody lives there. Three months ago, the land was given, the building was given, it was a church, and there were 10 people attending. 
Remember the scripture? Go out into the highways and the byways and compel them. I keep getting these reports from Salvador. I got another one. 20 people gave their hearts to the Lord today. We get there and he says, let's go. Let's go. I don't know what your schedule, but let's we'll go out and go into the neighborhood. And walking into the neighborhood. And that's Salvador going there. House by house. Knocking on doors. Some people love him, some people don't. Some people want to do nice things for him. When I got there, <laughs> some of the people that knew me before, they kept coming and giving me coffee. I got all sorts of coffee grounds. They knew I loved coffee. They knew I didn't have a good experience with their coffee last time I was there. Don't put coffee grounds in my luggage, though. <laughs> customs don't like that. <laughs> I'm going through customs, they open it up, and here's these bags. Says, What's this? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that drug people put uh, coffee grounds to throw off the scent of the dogs. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, people, but uh, <laughs> they meant well. Goes out, begins to, I'd say knock on doors, but there are no doors. There's one lady that we went and visited. I don't know how old she was, but that's her front door. You see the curve, how high it is? The floor on the inside was dirt. That's her house. She has to get in and out of that. But if they know Jesus, you know what you run into? People with the biggest smiles. Biggest smiles, loving Jesus. Is there anything I can do at the church? Well, you can come with us and we'll go visit some more people. That's the communist flag back there. That's one of the things that's causing all the problems. Those are bullet holes in a Catholic church. The uh, protesters that were protesting against the government ran into the church seeking refuge, and they opened fire on the church. There's a corner. Those are all bullet holes. This is some pictures of the land that was given and the building that was given. You can see the church. That's the chapel back there. That's the that's main place. Given. I don't know if you picked up on that. Just given. A year ago, nothing. Now we got a building. It needs some work then. They're looking for some, a couple more walls. There's the backside of the church. And I said, well, we're going to put a wall here? They said, oh, no, 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 no walls. We don't want walls. Walls cost money. We just put a roof on it. Put a roof on it. Keep them dry. Another view of the church. There's, that's going to be the classrooms. You see all the steel work up there? Somebody donated $10,000. Just, here's for the classrooms. That's going to be the second floor. There's work to do there. We've got to put that down. It's going to be, praise God. Another view of it, you got three different classrooms there, and then the far end, they're going to have showers. No hot water. You don't get hot water in Nicaragua. <laughs> That's, you, don't, you don't get that. Now, that's what we have. And we got 55 students showing on up. Can't really put them in there. Now, what would we do here? We would say, hey, you know, we're behind schedule. We gotta, we gotta work on this. We gotta get things ready. Somebody else says, you know, we got a building right next door. This is a bunkhouse. In fact, there's two buildings like that. You can have one for the men and one for the women. They're separated. It'll work out great. You can use it until you get your classrooms done. It's a miracle. 
That's God orchestrating stuff. Somebody donated those desks. Just, here you go. You see the poverty level there, though? And yet somebody comes along and says, here, I got, I got these. Put them into the school. That's the kitchen. Those are the stoves, ladies. That's where they were cooking. There's a sink outside that's all outside in a common area. Somebody donated a grill. In fact, somebody donated three grills. You can say praise God. God. This stuff just comes in. Many cases, we're not even asking for it because it's happening too quick because, you know, I'm still trying to get a, a wall up. That's just showing the streets, row of houses. Another house. Now, I wanted to show you this picture. That's me with a cup of coffee. Wasn't that great? <laughs> That's another reason why we're not recording this and sending it down to Nicaragua. For a country that exports coffee. <laughs> but I'm in a mall. The other picture with the cars, that's a volcano in the background. But I want to show you, it looks like a modern city. And you could, might as well be down in Baltimore, Washington, D.C. Anything we can buy here, you can buy there. But yet you see where the people live. Now, this is the church service. I told you, three months ago, Salvador started with ten people. And he began to go out on the streets, house to house to house. Last Saturday, he had 200 people in that church. Three months. Three months. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Friends, your prayers, your prayers have a lot to do with that. And it's been my experience with God He's blessing them, and that's going to come right back on us. Get ready, Cumberland. Get ready, Cumberland. Those are soldiers. They, they, didn't, they didn't want me to take this picture. Uh, <laughs> I want to go back to the Bible. I'll be done in just a few minutes. I want to go back to the Bibles. On our way to the Bibles, we, we drive by these guys. I uh, got my camera up to take pictures of them. And Salvador reached over, and he says, no, don't take pictures. They already think you're a CIA agent. <laughs> but there were some protesters up in front of them. That's just another house. Somebody lives there. You can see their laundry up there. You have that, and then you have this. Beautiful country on the side. Um, I think I have one more. See the, the razor wire? The, the people have, I mean, there's razor wire everywhere. If you leave anything out or anything unlocked, it's gone. See my tie? This tie spent a year in Nicaragua. <laughs> when I was there last time, somebody, the day I was supposed to leave, somebody stole the car, the rental car. In it was my suit. I had a, one of those, you know, uh, bags to carry your suits in. They, they stole my suit. They told, stole two pairs of shoes. And they stole this tie. Now, it'd be a miracle if that happened up here and I got it back, right? It's a real miracle. Down there, I got it back. I got the luggage back. I got the suit back. I got the shoes back. I got the tie back. Even simple things like that. God is good. God is good. That over there, that's the assemblies of God. That's the school. Now, back to the Bible real quick. We went in there. Those guards were there. We drove a little bit farther. There were protesters, and it didn't look good. I'm like, those guys, you know, they, they, you know over 600 people now have been killed. He says, Salvador, we got to get out of here. This is where the... The Bible store is right on up here. So we get on up there to the Bible store. Well, they were smart. They got out of there. 
Stores closed. Oh, man, how are we going to get the Bibles for the, the students? Salvador says, I know a place. I know another place. So we drive out another direction. We're not going to go back because things are getting heated up. There were more soldiers. Those protesters were completely surrounded. And it was going to be bad. Completely surrounded. Anyway, we make it to another Bible store. and They, they don't have the kind that we're looking for. And so uh, we, 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 we call around. And Salvador says, well, let's go to the Assemblies of God. They got a school here. Sure, it's a, it's a school for ministers. Surely they have extra Bibles. We got all their Bibles. Wasn't enough. <laughs> it costs a little bit of money, but we got them. Actually, it costs less money than what we were getting our Bibles for, so we went out of there thanking the Lord, but we wanted Bibles for everybody. We went to two other places. We ended up with exactly the number we needed for half the price that we were originally going to pay. Now, I choose to believe that the devil was throwing some interference there, and God said, I'm just going to turn that around in a blessing. Devil, you keep interrupting this thing, and pretty soon I'm going to give them them Bibles free. God is good. Right now, that's, that's the cook at the school. She used that pot over the open fire, and she cooked for 55 students, the faculty, and me. It was good. There's the students coming on in, getting ready to register. They're walking away from their lives and devoting their lives to Jesus Christ. Many of them came from long distances. They said, I just, I just want to give to Jesus. I want to give something back to the Lord. That building that we're in right there, Donated until we finished the school. Go ahead and use it. How much? Go ahead and use it until you get the school done. Theological professor. Taught theology at the university. Says, I'll come in as an instructor moved him on into those facilities. He's living there. He's with the students. There they are, worshiping God. These pictures here are the students came up front, and those are the local pastors praying for him, praying over him. There they are standing up front. I'm giving them a charge there. How many know what a charge is? Anybody still with me? How many know what a charge is? You know, it's, 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 it's like a vow, right? It's like a promise. And I gave them scripture. In fact, I gave them the same scripture that Paul gave Timothy. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Convince. Folks, say that with me. Convince. Amen. You can say compel, too, if you want. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure affliction through the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. And then I had them all say amen. And then we pray for him. Friends, we're going into revival meetings tonight. 
Revival is breaking out down there. Ten people in three months to 200 people. No school at all, not ready, 55 students. That is to no small part because of the prayers that have gone out of this building. Some of you don't know it, but we have another missionary that we've sent money to. They were prayed over me. I got a flag. It made me an honorary citizen of Nicaragua. <laughs> Apparently, when the church does it, it doesn't hold the same weight as when the government does it, though. I yes. tried to show the customs my flag and <laughs> said I'm an honorary citizen. That didn't, didn't work real well. There's the students. And the students, pastors, and, and the faculty there. This is in Asia, the Winklers. And I'm, I'm done. I, I really am. I just give me two more minutes. We, we sent support to another ministry, missions. Remember I started off telling you about how 17 years ago, 18 years ago, Salva and I had an encounter over lunch once. God was making connections. Isn't it interesting that we're commissioning pastors to go out? That's it, it's kind of like, it's, it, it's more than just sending out a missionary. We've got a school for pastors. We didn't plan this. I didn't plan it. God did, though. The Winklers, ministry, they, be, they belong to Campus Crusade for Christ. And we're supporting them in Asia. Those are students. Guess what they're studying to be? Pastors. God is doing something special here, folks. We're riding along and we don't, e don't even realize that God said, all right, y y you, you get to pray for these. Don't you dare slack on that responsibility, people. They need your prayers. Your prayers count. Your prayers provide them protection. Your prayers work miracles. So thousands and thousands of dollars pour in from who knows where at just the right time. Professors give up their job and go someplace not knowing how they're going to live. Can you support me? No, we don't have any money to support you. But if you make this decision, we expect you to be there every day. <laughs> it's incredible. Check this out. That's an orphanage. Many of you didn't even realize that you're helping an orphan orphanage in Asia. That's Lewis Winkler. He's talking to, stu he's talking to students that are going to be ministers. This is one of the ministers that graduated. I put in yellow there, in case any of you might be interested. He mentioned he would like Bible teachers to come for two weeks. Anybody can spare two weeks in Asia? To come for two weeks. If you know a good Bible teacher who is up for an adventure, there you go. I have no idea what language they speak. But you know what I discovered this time? Google has a translator. <laughs> you, you push it, you speak English into it, and it comes out in whatever language it is that you need it to come out in. Praise God. <laughs> that was a lot better than last time I was drawing pictures. Can you all stand? Every day was filled with miracles. When that man stood up there healed, Salvador looked at me and he says, have you ever seen a miracle like that? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have. That's our God. That's our God. We're looking for revival. We're going to have revival services. I mean, we're looking for great things. But it's like I said at the beginning, folks, 
stir it up. You stir it up. Stir up that gift. Stir up that excitement for Jesus. I've just shared with you things that God did just a couple days ago. The world can't understand, but God will get his message out. And he's using you. He's using this church. He's stretching around the world. That in itself is a God thing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you can, please come on out tonight. Every night, I know you're going to be blessed. Pastor Devin's going to, you know, he's, he's going to give some messages that are going to inspire you and encourage you. And maybe even one of you might jump on board and become that Bible teacher for two weeks. I know some of you could, could do it. I know some of you could do it. Come expecting. Come expecting. And you'll be amazed at what God will do. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you allow us to be part of this incredible adventure that you call life. Thank you that you allow us to be part of reaching out and saving lost humanity. Thank you, Jesus, for willingly laying down your life so that we can have a relationship with you and Father. God, I ask you now that, that you will bless these services that are coming up. Feed our souls. Feed our spirits. Equip us so that we can go on out and we can further your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you tonight.